First flight, we got the weather, and we're about to leave Portugal, head to the Canaries. Christmas. Um, today is December 5th and we've got 3,300 miles to go. Uh, but spirits are high and I think everyone's excited for the next 20 days to see what that's going to be like at sea. It's December 7th. Day three of our phase two of the crossing, and it's gotten warmer. Check it out. Warmer. How about it, huh? Oh, it's so good. Slow as you go, it still gets warmer, huh? Yeah. When we started, the water was at five degrees Celsius. Now it's 13 and a half. I think it's, let's see, what does the thermometer say? In the mid 20s, so that's in the 70s. A little cloudy, but look who's not wearing full fallies. In other news, not much to report. We've been motoring. There's been literally no wind. We are going to get into the Canaries tomorrow night for a quick stop for more fuel and some more food. And then it's about 14 more days to the Caribbean. for a second time. We are just entering the Canaries for about a five hour rush turnaround. Four hours. We're gonna dock, get some fuel, get some more fresh food, and then be back on our merry way. Because um, we don't have a lot of time to go exploring because we gotta make their charter. Butter's melting! What does that mean, Andrew? It's time to turn west. <laughs> we left the Canaries and settled into the final part of our passage. Two to three weeks of straight sailing. The days slowly drifted into another and we got into the rhythm that comes with the peaceful Groundhog Day of watches, broken sleep, and time disconnected from the rest of the world. Dan, what's for dinner? It smells really good. We have a beef stew. Nice. Seeing as um, I've just made up what's in it, I have no idea what's called. We are alternating cooking. Whoever goes on at 6 p.m. has to make dinner, and it's starting to get a little competitive. We're racing a J-boat, Rainbow. He's only going about a half knot faster than us, so we're holding him at bay. We're doing about 10 knots right now. Pretty good. We can beat a 40 meter J-boat. Feel good about that.
So you want to know what true love is on his watch. Will came up to a squid that had jumped on deck. Now I'm going to attempt to bait it. A few days in, Andrew shared with us a poem that he had written about what the crossing had meant to him so far. A crossing. Another season behind us, our mission complete. It's time to cross the ocean and join the rest of the fleet. Through trials and tribulations, we find ourselves ready at last. When Dan went and broke something, and then we had to pull the mast. <laughs> <laughs> then we sailed down the channel and across the feared Biscay, when suddenly a low pressure system was barring our way. Now we're waiting in Portugal until the weather mends, eating salty seafood and seeing old friends. Now the weather calm, a sea devoid of waves, arriving in the Canaries after motoring four days. And now the long passage, racing against the clock, thinking of our guests waiting on the dock. But for now we sail under the sun and the moon crescent, enjoying each moment of our unburdened present. Hit the trade winds. We're going downwind at a pretty solid clip. The winds are up to about 25 knots. The seas are at about six to nine feet. And we've been rolling and flogging the jib for about four days now. It's been off and on, bad to calm. Last night was a bad one. Started to get some holes in the Genoa. The crew is really tired. The noise is well underway. In this sea state and the constant motion, I think is starting to, to get to everybody. We've got 11 more days, I think, of these conditions. Um, not scary, not unsafe, not wet, just rolling, rolling, rolling. Somewhere mid-Atlantic, the Genoa finally let go and along the leech, uh, a big tear started to develop. Down that outer leech tear. Yeah, I've got a bunch of long strips and we're gonna butterfly stitch it and cinch it. Okay. We'll start high and then work down. We debated whether we could bring the sail down to deck level, fix it there, and hoist it back up. Whether we could fix it in place, aloft, or, or whether we should put up the new sails. The decision was made to save the new sails for the people that paid for them and try to fix the, the Genoa. And Andrew decided that it would, it would be worth it to go aloft to do that work.
once Andrew was in place aloft, he attempted to use the tape by wrapping sections from one side of the sail around the leech to the other to form a, a kind of butterfly stitch. We still have 1,700 miles to go, so hopefully this, this Genoa will, will last. All right, halfway. Half Are you recording? I'm recording. Test, test. Testy, testy. One, two, three. All right. What do you think about halfway, Kat? I was going to ask you. Oh. So, halfway across the ocean today. There it is. Can't get more in the middle than here. How's the crossing going? I've been going really fast lately. In fact, we've been, uh, I don't know, I couldn't say for sure like what my, my record is for like three days or whatnot, but this is probably one of the fastest three day periods we've had. 196, 210, and 220 miles a day. Pretty good. It's just a half point. It's in the middle. Halfway. Woo! Dan, uh, can I ask you how your crossing's going? <laughs> From side to side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun, fun and easy trip so far. Now, how's your crossing going? Rolly. <laughs> Not much sleep, but good. Have you ever had a crossing going this way that wasn't rolling? I don't remember the first one being super rolly. I think we got a bit of an angle on the first one, so we could actually fly the main and um, get ourselves pinned over. All the others have pretty much been sail breakers dead down the middle. Yeah. How does this crossing compare with what you thought it was going to be like? I don't know. I mean, we've sailed enough that the sailing aspect, there's really uh, no big surprises there except how important it is to have an efficient downwind sail configuration if you're going to do anything in the trade winds I'm realizing now. Um, but other than that, it's just been sort of a test of after a week or two weeks on a boat, what's that going to feel like? And that's been fine. From a group dynamic, situation like it's fine that's the other thing that's sort of surprising is at least from my perspective it's, everybody likes each other yeah everybody's still getting along <laughs> although they say if you don't know who the crazy person is uh, it's probably you right yeah. <laughs> there's always one person that everybody hates the common enemy so that's worried me because you said that before we left and it's like am i that guy yeah <laughs> well i've worried that about myself because there's no one here that's the common enemy it's all of us. Yeah. No, the crossing's going really well. The last three or four days have been exceptionally rolly and it's it's a different kind of mind because when you're an anchor and it's rolly, you kind of blame yourself. It's like, ah, oh, I anchored to the wrong spot. You can't sleep, but you're really, who's there to blame? But out in the sea, what's there to do? So you kind of have to suck it up and deal with it. Um, so the next seven days it'll be more of the same and I think by the time we get on land we're not going to be able to stand up without falling over, but no, it's going well. The boat that's 83 miles to windward of us. It's a Hanzi um, 531 named Dub 2. They've got three adults and two children. They've lost their rudder. Oh. So Martinique Coast Guard's uh, facilitating the search and rescue. 
they picked up our AIS position. Oh, and, uh, or UK, that was UK Coast Guard. Uh, um, facilitating it because it's an English shot. So let's furl in, we'll get poles down, and. Uh, so we're turning. Yeah. And we just got a call from the British Coast Guard that said that there is a boat 80 miles into the wind and into the waves from us that has lost its brother. There are three adults and two children on board. So I think they need to abandon ship and we are now backtracking to, to go perform a rescue mission. I can't imagine what it's like for this poor family to be in the middle of the ocean um, without, without their rudder. So um, we should reach them in about 11 hours. Um, and yeah, hopefully, Hopefully all goes well.